Covido's friends took the deceased to General Hospital, Lagos Island, and abandoned him in his vehicle on the instructions of Davido. That the CCTV footage at General Hospital, Lagos, picked up the white escort vehicle and, of course, captured the entire activity. That the vehicle subsequently was recovered from Davido's residence at number seven Awoshika Street, Lekki Phase One. These new revelations completely debunks Davido's claim that he did not know how the deceased got to General Hospital, Lagos. For this reason, I have instructed the DPO Lion Building and the investigating team to again invite Davido and question him in line with these new findings. It is our intention to know why the victim was taken to General Hospital Lagos, dumped, and those who took him there fled the location without as much as notifying the hospital authorities or reporting to the police. That calls for questioning. As I speak to you, Davido has been reinvited for questioning and is currently with the DPO Lion Building and the investigating team. Autopsy has been conducted and the autopsy, the preliminary interim autopsy reports reveals that the victim died of asphyxia, which in Laban's term means suffocation. At the end of this fresh round of investigation, I will again let Lagosians know of our findings. In a related um, incident, you will also recall that on the 7th of October 2017, at about 2000 hours, the Chief Security Officer Banana Island Ocean Parade Ikoi informed the DPO that two persons named Olugbemi Ga Abiodun male of Flat Bill Ocean Parade Banana Island Ikoi and Chime Amechina male of the same address were found dead inside a BMW saloon car with registration number KJA631AY, white in color, at an underground garage in the estate. The DPO Ekoi and its investigating team rushed to the scene and upon close examination of the victims, it was discovered that there were no visible marks of violence. However, a further search of the vehicle revealed some wrapped substances suspected to be hard drugs. The substances have been sent for analysis to determine what exactly they are. And the reports will soon be released. In addition, the autopsy report, the final autopsy report 
is still being awaited. Preliminary autopsy has been carried out, but the pathologist reveals that there is need for additional confirmation before he comes out with the final autopsy, which will state very clearly the cause of death. These two cases are being brought out in the public domain because the police have realized that it is generating a lot of interest both in social media and other uh, media um, outlets. And there is need for the police to keep members of the public abreast with investigation so that people don't jump into conclusion. So I would warn members of the public to await results and tests and final autopsy results from us. We will make it public as soon as it's ready. The command two, within this period under review, made a lot of arrests and recoveries. This is consequent upon sustained onslaught on criminals within and around Lagos and the deployment of additional personnel to tackle the menace of armed robbery, kidnapping, cults, related activities, and other forms of social vices in the command. This has paid off, and within this period, 40 notorious cultists, armed robbers who specialize in terrorizing Ijede, Ikurudu, Aja, Ekbe, Sangutadu, and other parts of Lagos were arrested. The suspects have confessed to the crime and will be arraigned in court when we have completed investigation. On the 8th of October, 2017, based on intelligence gathered, a gang of armed robbers were intercepted while robbing innocent citizens at number 41 Egbi area of Ijede Ikorodu Axis. Special anti robbery squad operatives from the command headquarters stormed the hideout and arrested. One Ayila Aziz, male, the gang leader, and nine others, namely Balogun Yinka, 20 years, Begusa Peter, Olua Shegun, 32 years, Omolaja, Olua Femi, 29 years. God de Samuel, 19 years. Dennis Ifiayi, 34 years. Ogun Sanya Yusuf, 27 years. Odubanjo Akim, 35 years. Demola Ogun Badero, 20 years. Tayo, uh, Teddy Jaye, 23 years. They all confessed, uh, apart from being armed robbers, they also belong to the IA confraternity courts. One locally made English revolver pistol with five rounds of life ammunition, one locally made cut to size double barrel gun, one locally made cut to size single barrel gun, two locally made single barrel pistols with three life cartridges, and one locally made axe and plier was recovered from the suspects. All suspects will soon be charged to court. On the 5th of September also, at about 0200 hours, seven armed men invaded Okomaga Senior Secondary School, Ekpe, with three soldiers and a truck with registration number LND61XQ and went straight to the solar panel and vandalized 71 solar panels. They also forced the door of the container 
where the inverter batteries and accessories were kept and stole them. Immediately, the local police was alerted. They mobilized to the scene. And three suspects, and all suspects were arrested. Amongst the suspects are three alleged serving soldiers. Preliminary investigation has also led operatives of this command to track down the other suspects in Delta, Anambra, and Imo states, where one Festus Maduka was arrested in a hotel. He confessed to have received the solar panels and inverter batteries from this armed robbery gang. Other suspects arrested in connection with this crime include Samuel Ani, 30 years, Michael Omoregbe, 30 years, Efosa Philip, 27 years, Ifedayo Odun Foye, 35 years, a dismissed Air Force uh, personnel, Shibize Namani, 34 years, Festus Maduka, 26 years, John Uwokoma, 31 years, and Chibuzo Chuku, 23 years. Exhibits recovered so far include 16 solar panels and 33 inverter batteries. A similar arm robbery incident at Aja occurred. One Mary Inedu female boarded an unregistered uh, Honda Civic uh, vehicle. And of course, unknown to her, she was forcefully dispossessed of her techno phones, Nokia phones, ATM cards, and other personal effects. Police commenced investigation and have tracked down and arrested one son, the Uwaba, who has been identified by the victim. This command once again appeals to the good people of Lagos State. First and foremost, for us to be vigilant, for us to work very closely with our local police in line with the principles of community policing and community safety partnership. When we see something, we must say something. Secondly, we must partner together to curb this scourge of drug abuse. We know that there's a very strong correlation between drug intake and crime. Secondly, we are also aware that our youths are taking to drugs at a disturbing rate. And those who are supposed to be role models are also involved in drug activities. We must join hands together to fight those selling drugs on our streets. Anybody who has information where you have any hidden container, hidden house, spots, where any form of drugs are being sold, please report at the nearest police station. I can assure you as the Commissioner of Police Lagos State that we would raid that location, we will seize the drugs, and we will arrest those involved. You will remember, you will recall that during our last press conference, we, we raided Akala and we recovered hard drugs of a street value of over 20 million. This fight is not for the police alone. Having safe neighborhoods, having safe uh, city, having a safe city is a collective responsibility. You must partner with the police. And in partnering with the police, if there is any station or any police formation or patrol vehicle you get to that does not treat your reports with the seriousness it deserves, I have already put 10 numbers out in the public. Please call those 10 numbers. Action will be taken against those uh, policemen. I thank you all for coming to this um, press briefing. And as the investigations unfold, we will let you know so you can inform members of the public. Thank you very much and God bless you.